What's important to me about what's called the fertile void is being able to stay with not knowing when you don't know. <coughs> Whether that's about where therapy is going to go with an individual client, being able to be with that person without knowing what will happen next. To be, um, as I saw on the website for the uh, conference, to be open to be surprised rather than to have to uh, uh, prematurely uh, codify and change and organize and make something happen, but to be able to stay with not knowing when you don't know, rather than filling in, waiting to, for the situation to ripen and to evolve. So where will Gestalt therapy go in the next 50 years? I don't know, but I know I have some concerns. I know I have some things that I think are important I know that I see some things that I think are problems, but I don't know where it will go. That's more at a macro level. At a micro level, sitting with one client, when I share their impact on me with them, I have no idea what will happen next. To be able to trust that something will happen, and even if it's something difficult or even bad, if I'm willing to stay there, I can deal with it and that person can deal with it. I don't have to be afraid of making a mistake, a mistake. As long as I'm willing to own my part of that if there is a rupture or if there is a difficulty. So the fertile void is, leaves open more possibilities because you're not trying to know before you know. Trying to know before you know is very limiting. It will limit the outcome, will limit what's possible to happen. So the that's the fertile part of the void. The void part of the fertile void can be either exciting or it can be terrifying. That it's so void, there's so much space that I have no idea where to walk, what to do, what to say, how to be. But that edge of staying with what I know and staying with what I don't know, being open to possibilities is what makes life exciting.